asking questions like that, just have a conversation with it, right? And, and understand that the way that AI or ChatGPT is built is predictive language. So it's using anything that's out there on the web. It's not creating its own, um, you know, uniqueness. You are, it's doing exactly what you tell it to do. And that's how the prompting and everything comes in. Justin Day. Hello, Justin. Hey there. How are you doing? I'm awesome. So just a little bit about Justin. He is the founder of Day by Day Digital, and he's in Dallas, Texas, a bustling business hub that shaped his uh, whole entrepreneurial journey. And uh, he's in Austin, Texas now. And he began his career as a project manager at his mother's agency. And when I heard that, of course, I was just like super passionate because I, I have a son who's 19 and helps yeah. me with my business a lot. So I'm excited to hear a little bit about that. And that agency is called Rocket Red. And mm -hmm. I just love that. And that drove his uh, motivation as well. And been uh, over five years at Rocket Red and he self-taught his self various skills, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs have to do at some point, web design and development and uh, SEO, content marketing, videography, email marketing. He also um, does a lot to uh, broaden his expertise in all those fields. And he says it was a really diverse experience for him. And he has a system called the Swarm System. And right. I'm super excited about that. I have gotten to know a bit about that and mm -hmm. plan to utilize that system as well in my own business. And just decades of experience, AI workflows, um, and he tries to really mix his uh, personal development with um, his business development. And I just, I love that. And I think with business, it is so hard sometimes to mm -hmm. incorporate that. So welcome, Justin. I, I just, hey. I just think that's all so amazing. So thank you. Of course, I want to jump in just a little bit about what that was like uh, mm -hmm. working with your mom and your inspiration. And yeah, no, it was great. Um, it has its ups and downs working with family, as I'm sure a lot of people know. But, you know, there I, I was very fortunate enough to learn at a very rapid pace at a very high level. Um, you know, my, with my mother started her agency, Rocket Red, uh, quite a long time ago. And, you know, by the time I was able to work with her as an intern where I started out, you know, we were working with huge clients like the North Tol Texas Tollway Association. And I was doing uh, like videos for them. And um, you know, big doctors and all like uh, just stuff that I would have it would have taken me years to get into. I did have some uh, I, I got some jump starts there, which was very cool. I basically threw myself in the fire and she threw me in and I uh, I came out not too burned. So, you know, and I and I enjoy that about I think that's an entrepreneurial thing where I think if I'm just like, OK, I could figure it out. Uh, and that's what I did. And, you know, working with my mom, she allowed me to be pushed and allowed me to grow and learn everything over about five years, starting out with, you know, just the project management. Then our web developer left. I was like, I could probably do a little bit of that. And then we needed some videos like, oh, maybe I'll do that. And then that all started like coming together. And it's like, well, I kind of got it all going on right now. So maybe I start my own thing. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience for sure. What was that like breaking away? Was that, uh, that's always hard working with family. I know that, it yeah. is, especially when you're trying. You know, it, to it, it was definitely difficult. Um, I, I, it was a moment in time where my mother was shutting down her, she was retiring. So it was uh, a option to go find another agency or stop, start my own. So I was just like, I, I, at that point I had some word of mouth and some, I was doing some like side projects and hustles. I was like, I can keep this up a little bit. And it took me a while to like really dive seriously into it. And then once I did, um, things just kind of took off and exploded. So it's been a journey. So tell us a little bit about your family, not too personal, but a little bit about your family so we can get a little idea of what exactly you juggle when you work with your work-life balance. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a twin sister. She, uh, she just had her uh, first baby, which is very crazy. I'm uh, I'm not there yet. So it's a very weird thing for a twin to have, but very cool. And I've got a little sister, all, all our whole family, everyone is uh, in a marketing position as far as their work roles. So, you know, my mom had her own agency, my dad had his own agency for a while. And then he then flipped over and created like his own full company. So 
growing up, I was also, you know, as a teenager, I was uh, cleaning pools. So I, you know, grinded out there for a while. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to be in pools anymore. Let me get indoors and see what this marketing thing is about. Um, so we had kind of that relationship growing up where we were all pushing each other and um, just trying to figure out what our roles were. But ultimately, we were surrounded by marketers. And that's what we learned. So just all these things kind of come naturally to us. And I think over the last 10 years or so, I've been able to kind of unlock what was what I grew up around and like the sponge that I was around. And I think now I'm starting to really understand. I remember as a kid, like thinking about, you know, how hard my mom worked. I was like, why are you doing this? It doesn't make any sense. And now I'm on the end of it. I was like, yep, I got it. This is not a cake ride, but it is fulfilling. And um, yeah, as you know, it's great to see kind of both sides of that too. And uh, sometimes with my son, I see this, just this, divergence of I, I you know we all want to achieve and we all want to do more and then mm. he watches me in the long hours that it takes to do all the things that we do and mm. then sometimes you know he's just like oh there's no way I want to just be a mechanic and right. it, it's kind of a balance with our children too that we don't want to you know show them a side that that looks like it's the bad side so I know for me it's really hard to do that work-life balance, especially when you have so many things going on and you have multiple right. businesses and you've got to try to juggle all that and keep that straight too. Yep. Yeah, definitely. It, it, you know, having that balance is important and taking it seriously is very important. You know, unfortunately I was unaware of the power of stress and how that can physically affect you as an entrepreneur. And just, you know, I didn't know like the levels of, you know, how can like you, the, the the physical tolls and like that having panic attacks. I, I think that there should be more openness about that for entrepreneurs and just understanding what those feelings are because um, if you don't take care of that and do the stress management and really have that work-life balance that I did, you know, have a, have, a, have a while of an episode for that, which, you know, I'm happy to speak out about because I think other people should know more about that um, because it is a real thing the stress can get to you. And if without that work-life balance, um, it can become very overwhelming very quickly. So I think people take that more need to take that more seriously um, than than it kind of is at the moment, you know. In your field too, I really see a part of the journey that people utilizing you that has a service, what you do with your business, mm -hmm. could really help people with their work life balance. Because That's right. I know you and I talking over the past few weeks that, you know, I, I'm going to employ you to do all the things that I don't want to do. All so, right. you know, it's like, how do you let loose of that and mm -hmm. delegate, you know, because everybody, whether you're doing a nine to five job or right. you know, whether you're an entrepreneur, it's really hard to delegate that stuff when you mm -hmm. think, Oh, it would just take me a few minutes to learn that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's a trap. It, it, That's a trap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it's a very hard trap as an entrepreneur because we want to do not. I mean, I want to do perfect. It's hard not to, or at least strive for it. Um, and what I've really come to learn is done is better than perfect. And I've recently hired uh, four virtual assistants and an operations manager so that I can get my time back to be able to run the business as well as delegate. And if if I can get these you know people while well, delegating to get it 60, 80 percent of the way there that's better than me not just running in place right and again it's offloading that stress and being able to scale that's what it comes with business and it's hard um and i'm still learning like delegating and, and handing things off but you know, i'm finally at a place where I'm, i love to come back to work and i'm excited to work again because I, I have time to work on the things work on the business not in the business so those are the things that allow me to do that I think one of the things too that I love is for people to think about what their time is worth mm. and, you know, just little things like having somebody clean my house. It right. sounds like just such a, um, a luxury, but it's really not. When I think about what my time is worth yep. and the hourly, what someone, you know, charges to do that, I think that's really important. And when you're in any sort of situation where even you know, just what is your family time worth? I mean, that's, that's you know, yeah. priceless, right? right? But if you could spend two hours 
with your family in the park or something yeah and you know two hours you know it's like i don't even know what they charge which usually uh, it's it's different from area to area but mm -hmm. maybe it's 150 or 200 dollars you know for four hours of house cleaning you know what what right. is that worth to to have that done for you and mm -hmm. i think that a lot of people just think of those things as luxuries and maybe they're not or Oh, okay. I know the next topic I want to jump into, but mm. yeah. So what are, what are your thoughts on that when you delegate and, and time management and, and looking at value and time that, you know, I always, I think obviously time is the number one thing. And I actually got a thing on my desk here where it's this little timer that I put, I do have like, you know, ADD. So if I don't like delegate my time and really strat like strategically map out my day, um, then things get away from me. So I, again, that's how valuable I, I place my, my time is I have a timer right in front of me daily to make sure that I'm staying on track because yeah, you can't get the time back. That's the one thing that is so valuable that we can't get back. And but I think just really respecting that um, and doing starting to, you know, delegate now, whether that you get an, getting an executive assistant or um, just something, you know, could helping you offload as an entrepreneur can show you how much that can impact your life and your business. So yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Well, even people who are stay at home moms, or maybe mm -hmm. they're helping their husbands with their business, or, you know, maybe just if you are an employee and you have a desk job, I think that's great advice to set the timer to, to organize your schedule. And I love that thought that just spending an hour a week, just maximizing what you know m mapping it out mm -hmm. and i'm old school i have a paper calendar i just <laughs> yeah. like to look at everything you mm -hmm. know just laid out and it's nice to have you know it on your phone and reminders mm -hmm. and stuff like that but but i like the paper calendar but i would love for you to talk a little bit about ai because this is yeah. interesting and it can save people so much time yeah and it's like everybody's scared of it because it's new. I get it. And I think one thing I would really like to share with people is that there is, it, it's happening. There's <laughs> nothing that you can do to stop it. Yeah, it's not going and anywhere. It has so much utility. If that's, you know, if you have a business or if you have a job, writing emails and all the things. And I just have a, a friend recently and he is a Walmart supplier. We're in, you know, Ar we're in Bentville, Arkansas, home of Walmart, I always say. And so most everybody around here, are what we call Walmartians. And so he is a vendor and he's constantly writing emails back and forth. And before he was spending his whole yeah. day constructing emails and then mm -hmm. backing off and reading them and deciding, you know, is this what I want to say? Is this how I want to yep. say it? Yep. And just constructing that. And I, I was at work one day and I, I ran to his house because he was just so frustrated because he'd just been writing emails all day. And I mm. said, trust me, just trust me. And, you know, I went to his house. I showed him how to get chat GPT. There and you go. It's a game changer. And so like yeah. a little while, you kind of have to hold their hands through it. But the minute somebody sees that, yeah. they're blown away about you know, just the possibility. And mm -hmm. nobody believes that you can just put in a few little things and get so much out. Right. We have this paranoia about robots mm. are gonna take over the world. But nobody's gonna nobody's gonna give the idea for the content. I guess someday someday robots could take over the world. But um, can you talk a little bit about that and how you use AI in your business and maybe how just a person who works a desk job or a person yeah. who a, a mom or kids or how we can really embrace that and look at that a little differently. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's so many opportunities, whether you're in a business or stay at home mom or just a day to day person going about your business. Um, I think just having a mindset going into AI or automation is looking throughout your day, what are repetitive tasks that are taking up your time that could probably be done by a third grader or, you know, someone else or just like an AI bot, right? And then taking note of that is definitely a place to start to, to understand where you could potentially apply AI. But the way that we that we use it is, uh, you know, collapsing your timeline for everything while having something like that's a very clean and uh, strategic output. And that all comes down to prompting, which is a whole nother conversation. But ultimately, you know, it's it's 
It can be an overly complicated tool, but doesn't have to be. Anybody can use this and get a great output by it um, simply by asking, you know, just copying and pasting an email into uh, ChatGPT and saying, hey, you are an email writing expert. Uh, create a perfectly written response to this in 100 characters or less and give a call to action. Like you can you can continue to go with it and flow with it, right? Um, there's There's so much you can do with it, but, you know, where we where we really leverage it is to get our team 60 to 80 percent of the way there and then we go in and use whether that's for content or social media or a st strategy or anything like that we we start there because we've got a great level and understanding of how to leverage the tools and get us you know instead of it taking days or weeks or months to get some of the stuff done we can have it done in less than a day and then review it and update it in less than a week and you know really leverage our time appropriately so that we can move fast and you know business owners can definitely do that in the same way whether that's like i think a lot of times a lot of things that i'll use you can download it on your phone actually and it's like you can talk to it as a voice thing and what you know you could use it as is just if there's a complicated subject or it's like what do face what do facebook ads really do or like asking questions like that just have a conversation with it right and, and understand that the way that ai or chat gpt is built is predictive language so it's using anything that's out there on the web it's not creating its own um you know uniqueness you are it's doing exactly what you tell it to do and that's how the prompting and everything comes in um but that's really, you know, the kind of the next level, but understanding that it's really just predicting what the next word you should say is based off of what you told it to. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. So again, it, it's, it's really, it's really not going anywhere, but you know, there are a ton of tools out there to make it super uh, usable for anybody. I think it's interesting too, because we think that our kids are going to be writing their term papers and that they're going to be cheating and it's like unless you have the prompt that says write this like a ninth grader right it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna sound like a computer it's gonna sound like ai right. yeah so i think that's so um you know and kids these days are are a lot smarter so i'm sure that they know about prompts and things like that but sure. for just the average person i think it'd be really fun for them to to know a little bit more about ai so I know I'm a chat GPT girl. I know that yeah. Google has a version called Bard. Yeah. Huh? Sometimes when chat GPT is running a little slow, I'll go over and hop over to Bard, B A R mm -hmm. and see what, what they're, you know, how fast they can move for me. Yeah. I like chat GPT because it has the, uh, where you can get the paid version and you can put in a little bit about your personality. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, could you just take just a second and kind of walk them through like literally how they get to chat GPT and um, yeah. how to, you just start an account and then you start, it's like literally like a chat box and. Yeah. So, you know, for anybody to get started, I think there's a free and a paid version. So if you go to chat.openai.com and create an account, you can sign up there. It's as easy as that. It'll ask you if you want to uh, you create the paid version. That's going to allow you to, uh, get a more fast and uh, I think I believe it's a GPT-4 that can like use plugins and other things like that which are a whole nother thing uh, but cheat codes there for sure I definitely recommend the paid version I believe it's like $20 a month uh, but the free version is still very killer and then you're going to open it up and it's going to be a chat bot and our chat box where basically you are, <laughs> the world is your oyster so the way that we generally start anything um, with getting our prompting out there or talking to this bot is at, is telling it who it is, what it needs to do and why it needs to do it. So we'll start off with saying something like, you are an expert social media copywriter who specializes in uh, engaging hooks for Instagram reels, you know, getting specific and in a conversational tone of Alex Hermosi, right? Kind of giving it a little bit more flavor. So it's not just totally AI. And then we'd come back and then a lot of times I like to do, if we know that something looks good, you can even upload an image that's pretty cool um, or or an example of a previous post that you like and say, you know, do something like this, you know, use it, giving, giving it an example. Again, it's predicting the text. So the more information that's relative that you can give it, 
uh, the better. We don't want to go overboard, but giving it direction for the output that you want it always helps. So those basics there, I'd say, um, tell it, you know, what the ex how who it is and, and what they're the expert in and be specific about it. And then um, give it a goal for that output. And um, yeah, those are the basics and just play around with it. And you know, I think starting broad and then kind of niching down as far as trying to get out the exact the exact output. Um, it's just all about getting used to it. So yeah. You know, there's even some some small things that I have used it for that people might not think about just the utility of that is that selling stuff on Facebook, the Facebook yeah. description of your items. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, and you can make it sound so much more compelling. So one of the things that I like to do is literally write in, I mean, it's, I write so loosely in chat GPT and the, in the chat box, I yeah. like, Hey, I want to sell this thing and it's an Xbox and it's a blah, 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 blah version. Mm -hmm. And it's only been used three times by my son because he's a PC or, you know, and it's, and then I'm like, write me a compelling thing that says how cool this is. And of course in marketing, you're the guru in this, but I know enough to be dangerous, but in marketing, you always want to create a feeling. So you can say, yeah. you know, create the feeling or imagine that their kid wants this thing and you know right. and, and then convince them you know that this would be a great thing for them to have mm -hmm. and they'll pump out a beautiful you can say one paragraph you can say you know two paragraphs and a lot of people think that you know chat gbt is used to write books and are their novels going to be real and i know there are versions that are out there commercial versions that can do that but for the most part i mean literally what i've seen with chat gpt and you can correct me if i'm wrong like Literally, if it goes past like about seven paragraphs, it, you know, it stops there. So it's not like, you know, people think that it's going to change the face of writing books and things. And, and you can tell the difference, I think, mm -hmm. if it's written from someone's point of view, because humans are so unique and we all have our different stories and we all have common threads and things that happen. But there will always be, especially nonfiction kind of stuff, there will always be, um, that human element i just yeah. imagine they're not being yeah no i totally agree i think it's becoming definitely more advanced but um and that's what we do like any within our again any of our content is getting it 60 80 percent of there and then putting the human element inside of it right that's where it's got to be because it's it's kind of flat and lifeless if not yeah one of the fun things that um you can do is if you're writing an email that you can write when you say prompts, I'll let you explain a little bit more about what that is. But for me, I'll put something just so simple as write this email and mm -hmm. it's to, you know, my son's teacher and I'm upset about this topic, but I don't want to sound upset. I want to be very respectful. Right, right. And so the human element a lot, you would write the email and you can't help but put that certain emotion the way you're feeling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Can you talk a little bit about that and a strategy that somebody might use something that simple for? Yeah, no, I think I think going back to one of your original uh, examples of the email, I and I ca catch myself doing this all the time too. It's like wanting to make it perfect. It takes a long time to do a well-written email that's structured and gets the right deliverables over all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I think that is a great like entry point for anyone um, is to get instead of spending whether that's 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever like those those 10 minute emails add up throughout the day right so mm -hmm. leveraging chat gpt to respond to those um in a, in a way that removes the emotion because we you know like you said we are human so i think that's a very smart way to do it and you know there's leveraging tools like zapier and um, other automations you can even have it automatically respond and draft things for you so that you don't even have to go enter it in. So, you know, there's, there's so many creative ways to leverage it. I think it's really interesting too, when you're my age, uh, 55 next month, St. Patrick's Day. There you go. Happy <laughs> that birthday. Technology is so elusive to me. I mean, people like you were born, you know, with the computer in your hand and, mm -hmm. I didn't even have a cell phone until I was in my 30s. So, you know, I mean, it's, you know, 20 years, what, how we've advanced. So I think there's a lot of resistance. My friend that I, you know, just mentioned that I kind of, he was so frustrated and I just picked up everything and ran to his house and showed him how to, from a very elementary view of how I know how to use chat GPT. And 
like you just see the light just go on that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is huge. So um, I just, I think that, which is wonderful people like you who help the technologically <laughs> challenged people like me, but you know, just from a standpoint of if you can turn on a computer and you can go you type in your search bar chat GPT, um, mm -hmm. it's really easy. And um, the app on the phone, literally you can talk in that. And sometimes yeah. I'll be sitting in the car waiting on something and I'll be like, you know, help me construct, you know, an idea of something to have for dinner or give me right. a recipe or, you know, um, gosh, even just, I'm trying to think of simple things just for the people who really aren't in business that, I mean, you can plan out a vacation and I yeah. think it's neat in chat GBT when it, you actually um, create your account, it'll mm -hmm. kind of give you ideas of things that could really help you in your life yeah. as well. I yeah. haven't, I haven't wrote a song for my son's graduation. That's awesome. Yeah, no, there's, it's <laughs> literally, don't it's tell endless. Him. Yeah, that's so fun. I, did you record it or? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, he thought it was awesome. He cried and everything. No, I, I personalized it, of course, but yeah, you know, that's great. and it was a little cheesy, so I had to sort of switch around but you know I but those are the fun things to have with ai and, not, and embrace it and i think there's so many creative things that are coming out that are going to be a emerging of like seamless ai i mean i think it's funny i think ai ai has been around for a long time you know when you think about what ai actually is it's like ai is you know, think about it um like when you were watching football and you know 10 years ago when you see the uh when you see the the yard marks on on the field that's ai showing you like leveraging in real time what's going on there right there's we've had it for a long time but it just became popular with chat gpt it's like the trending thing and now it's just like exploding and it's kind of you know people that necessarily can't aren't keeping up with it or embracing it it's overwhelming i'm sure um but it's there's there's this very interesting side is I think gonna that's coming out to potentially create a utopia for all of us that is going to be just like again seamless and making our lives easier. Um, so it's not going anywhere, but it's also I think what the manufacturers are and the people that are using it now are simplifying enough for, so that it doesn't have to be so cumbersome to the everyday person. So I think over the next year or two, you'll definitely see a lot more hardware that's going to come out with, you know, chat GPT built in as well as just it, it more accessible to everybody in a very simple way. And eventually it'll just be like this talking back and forth. That's what it's going to go to. So that'll be definitely an interesting period. I love that. Okay. So for, I want to make sure we get in um, what the swarm system is and um, how you can help businesses because yeah. I think there's a lot of people out there like my friend you know he's in his 60s and he's a Walmart exec and he didn't even know that you know heard rumors about chat GPT but really didn't know how simple it is just to get started and how much it mm -hmm. could change his life so your system and how do you help entrepreneurs and how could you help you know like I said we have a lot of Walmart vendors and things like that but anybody in any in any industry, even just if you've got a lawnmower business, not just, but you know, if you have some sort of business, having people don't realize, I always say, you don't have a lawn mowing business, you have a marketing business and yeah. you have lawns on the side. Yeah. So maybe talk a little bit about how you could serve any sort of community and then how people would get started with you or or what what they could do to really maximize being yeah. out there, especially a new business. Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate that. Um you know, the swarm system is essentially everything that you need to generate boiling hot leads for your business. Essentially, you know, just doing one part of marketing these days isn't enough to move the needle. So just doing SEO or, you know, blog posts once a week or one or two posts on social randomly or trending content, none of this stuff really moves the needle. But we know it's time cumbersome. It takes forever to do some of this stuff. And consistency is really what it comes down to when you're feeding the algorithm. So the swarm system is a hundred percent done for you system that's posting daily on social da daily on your blogs um, generating leads through facebook ads and really it's again that hundred percent done for you isn't it the, the crm uh, part of it we've also got a lot of fun tools and ai built in so that you, you can learn along the way how to leverage tools 
And, um, you know, that's kind of our done for you platform. And we've also got a, a, a kind of a step down platform where we're opening it up for entrepreneurs to kind of get the bones of what a really solid a CRM and workflow and automations leverage as well as access as well as accessing our AI tools. So um, there's definitely different ways we work with people in how to help them. So yeah, I mean, as far as reaching out, feel free to contact me on Instagram at Justin Day Digital. Feel free to DM in there. And my website is daybydaydigital.com. Um, I'm always looking to help out more people. And I think another initiative that I have for people that are just getting started or wanting to kind of start to learn AI tools. Um, I just launched AIMarketingTools.com, which are all the tools out there that I've used that are vetted by me and my team that are actually impactful and useful um, for specifically marketing purposes. So I think that's a great place to start. You can we've got a, we've got write ups of all of the tools, and I'm going to be going through and uh, doing video overviews as well. So uh, that is a free uh, free tool for anybody to use today. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I just, there's such a resource. And even like you said, posts, I mean, it's one thing to run Facebook ads and some people are intimidated by that, but, and again, you know, AI making your Facebook posts for you because it's, mm -hmm. it's free marketing, it's free advertising. And I know that some people don't want their personal business out there. So start a business page and right. share it with your friends, you know, and then, and then you can have, there, there's so many different things you can do with social media, but if even if you're a real estate person, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's just like you should be at least posting pictures of the houses you have for sale because it's just, yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, it's just a free resource. Why wouldn't you? You know, I know a lot of people back in the day we had, you know, newspapers and things like that, you know, but it's just social media is huge and it's such a great opportunity for people to get out there. And using AI to, to write your scripts and and to write your information too, just to be more compelling. I think. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a, that's been a big bottleneck for everybody, especially you know, small business owners that don't have a lot of time. Being consistent, posting is hard. But this is this is what you know. This is why you should leverage AI and these tools is to still be able to do some of this kind of stuff and um, you know keep up with it and get good results, right? That's what it's there for to kind of get your time back while still progressing your business. So, yeah, I think definitely for social media, that's a no brainer for it really any, any entrepreneur or person. If you're trying to get your brand out there, that's uh, that's the place to start so that you don't have to think about all of the copy and the creative. It can, you know, it can get all that for you. I think it's interesting, too. One thing that people don't think about is they think, oh, that's expensive. My parents had their own business and they always said, uh, what's the saying? Advertising doesn't cost, it pays. Right. And so using a service like yours that maximize that, and, and especially in my you know generation where we don't know a lot of the techie stuff and social media, you know, even if it's a couple thousand dollars a month, if you make that back in revenue, I mean, it's mm. just, you know, it's a win-win. And so people think, yeah. oh, I can't afford that. It's almost like you can't afford not to. You can't afford, exactly, exactly. <laughs> And it's just, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Like if you're not doing that and you're not posting frequently, you're not, you're not even close to what your competitors are doing. And then um, what are you doing otherwise to get in front of, to drive, to drive ROI or like those things that you're doing. If you're looking for, you know, lead generation at the easiest level, Facebook ad leads is definitely the way to go. And then it, you have complete control over organic. So posting there um, is low hanging fruit, but you know, I think just understanding that landscape and being consistent about it is the way to go. So again, um, the what, what's the next step for people if they want to want to reach you or to access you? Can you say the website again and how they? Yeah, get absolutely. You can reach steps. me at my Instagram, Justin Day Digital, or on my website, daybydaydigital.com. Daybydaydigital.com. I, you know, that my generation. I keep trying to talk like I'm old or something, right? <laughs> My generation, um, I've, I'm a Facebook girl, you know, Instagram has been a little tricky for me, but um, yeah, so everybody's got their platform they like to use, but that's right. Um, I can't say enough. You got to find Justin, make your um, job a little bit easier. And he's really great. I'm sure you do this for everybody, at least a quick visit and a, a call just to see if, if, if he's good fit. And yeah. I think you'll just fall in love with him and his team immediately. Anyway. 
Yeah, absolutely. Anybody feel free to, you know, book a call. We do free 30 minute consultations, you know, whether you need my help or not, i uh, always happy to talk through things and, you know, listen to everybody's just kind of pain points. That's what I'm here for. That's what my drive is. So I'm here to help. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, this has been a great show, Justin. Thank you so much for sharing. And I hope people have at least been inspired to think outside the box a little bit, whether, you know, you can use something simple or a tool just to do easy things around the house, make a, a recipe or a, a plan or something like that, you know, vacation right. plans or just to ask it. Maybe, maybe you want a business plan or something and you're thinking about doing something simple and maybe mm -hmm. you just want to ask it you know, what its thoughts or what it could potentially offer for you to do, just anything fun or write a yeah. children's book or something to read to your kids at bedtime. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think just playing around with it and having fun with it and embracing it is just the first step. So, yeah. yeah. And definitely, again, just kind of recap. I think that if you are an employee, I think it could just up your game. I yep. think, you know, just if you can advance in the company and you just save some time doing emails or things like that. But mm -hmm. if you have a dream about being an entrepreneur and you're scared and you don't know where to go and you just want somebody to hold your hand through the marketing and um, just kind of coach you along, Justin's your bye. I'm here to help. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me on. This has been a great podcast. I love, uh, love speaking with you and connecting. This is awesome. All right, kiddo. We'll have to do again very, very soon. And we'll come Absolutely. up with some crazy things we can share with people about tools they can use and just really benefit their lives. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thanks, Justin. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.